So how can we battle the temptation to use pornography? Let's take a look at that. You are watching the Beyond Sunday podcast. Previously, we talked about the fact that pornography is a sin. Uh, so we went through that in one of our pre previous videos, and we'll put a link down in the description so you'll be able to check that one out if you're just catching up with us today. But today I want to talk about what we do when we face that temptation. Sure, we've discussed the fact that this is a, a, a really detrimental effect in our lives. This is something that can really wreck us up and causes a lot of problems in our lives. But what do we do about it? How do we fight this back off? So as we're looking at this, I want to give us several kind of practical steps that we can take in our lives to begin combating this and to move into a place of freedom where pornography no longer has a hold over our lives. So the very first thing I think that's important to do is that we move out of hiddenness. That means we've got to start talking about this. We've got to start talking to other people and confess this to someone. So for a lot of folks, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is find a friend, a trusted person that, well, that you can actually put your secrets and kind of some of your hurts right in their hands that you can trust them with those kinds of things. Cause this is somebody you're going to want to be able to hold your confidence. And so you're going to want somebody that you can share that with somebody that's not going to judge you. And somebody that when they hear that is going to say, Hey, I get that. And they can understand and, and try and help you walk through this. And that's a great starting place. But for some people, they may not have a person like that in their life. And I've known some folks that uh, find groups and organizations that they can be a part of that have that understanding. I know of someone that actually is a part of uh, a kind of a recovery group like AA or anything else, but it's for folks with sexual addictions. And they meet together and they, they talk through those issues and those challenges they have, and they realize that they're not alone in this. And while those are great steps, if you're married, one of the things that I would have to say is, eventually it's going to be important that you confess this to your spouse. This is a part, a separate part of your life that you have kept hidden. And it's something that they're going to need to know. It's a wall that has divided the two of you. It's impacted your intimacy and your relationship. And you're going to need to actually air that out to get that out of the way. And hear me on this. It's going to be painful. There'll be tears. There's going to be a lot of anger probably with it because there's been hiddenness and lying and, it's even though it's painful, it's going to be important as part of your journey. So removing hiddenness is going to be that first step because it, when we get there, it's really going to remove the opportunity for the enemy to have that as a, as a lever in your life. He can use that to throw guilt and shame and keep pushing you into darkness because it's something that's hidden. It's this dual life that you've got that you don't want anybody else to know about, and he's going to remind you of that. So removing that removes that lever he has in your life. So the next thing for a lot of people is accountability. So for folks, you know, once we get that early burden off, the, the war's not over. And there'll be a lot of battles with this temptation up ahead. So for a lot of folks, accountability is huge. So again, this is a trusted person that you have in your life, somebody that is willing to be there for you whenever those temptations hit. And, and that's somebody that you're going to call or text and you go, hey man, I, I'm really experiencing a lot of lustful thoughts. I'm feeling very tempted. And they can talk with you and remind you of, of why you're trying to do this, why you're trying to push this out of your life and what this means to you and to your, your family, your friends, your loved ones. And they can be there for you and, and be that encouragement to help you keep moving forward. And in all honesty, kind of early on in your journey, they're probably going to be the person that's going to be there that you're going to give them a call and say, hey, I dropped the ball again. I've fallen down, I, I've succumbed to my temptations, and they're the person that's going to be there and be understanding and encourage you forward into your next steps. So for a lot of folks, accountability is a huge thing. It's, it's like when you have a, a workout buddy. If you have a workout buddy that expects you at the gym, then you're far more likely to show up on workout day. If you've got an accountability partner, somebody who you're supposed to talk to every time you fall down, you're not going to want to fall down as often because you're not going to want those hard conversations. So accountability is a great step. For some folks, there's those temptations. Uh, a lot of times it's with our devices, our, you know, our phones, our tablets, our computers, things like that. Those electronic devices that really just puts it right in front of us. 
makes it really easy for, for folks to access uh, pornography and things like that. So one of the first things you can do is secure your system. Uh, you can go into your browsers and all those kinds of things, put all the secure filters on, tell it to filter out uh, inappropriate content. All those things are already built into your computer. You don't need anything special. It can help you filter those things out so you're less likely to come upon those things. So that's a good first step. For some folks, as part of that accountability and part of securing your system, another thing you can do is uh, look into some accountability apps. So one of those is uh, a system called Covenant Eyes, and uh, that's at covenanteyes.com. Another one is uh, Custodio, uh, and there's another one called Ever Accountable. And I'll be sure to make sure that we get uh, links to each of those down below if you're ever uh, looking at how do I get access to any of those. But those are systems that you and a partner, your accountability partner, maybe your spouse, actually both have, and every time you access something that's inappropriate, and it may not even be uh, something that's actually pornographic. It may be uh, set with a high enough sensitivity to that even if there are things that may kind of lure you into those spaces, that it will actually trigger and send a message to someone else so that they can know when you're in that space and maybe they can proactively reach out to you and go, hey, that's probably not where we need to be. So those are some mechanical things that you can do, some, some checks and balances to put in your life that can help. But in truth, the thing that's going to be most powerful for us is actually staying in God's Word. Praying, uh, and especially after you fall into temptation, those are going to be the key things. Because in all honesty, we're not going to have the power in and of ourselves to overcome this. We're going to need the power of God active and moving in our lives to be able to overcome this. So there's some things that we probably need to do. One, find scripture that reminds you of God's truth about how damaging our lustful thoughts are and how it actually harms us. There's a lot of references that Paul makes in the New Testament as he's writing letters to the church that tells them about how much sexual immorality is hard for them, about how uh, painful it is in their lives and how much destruction it causes. So having scripture like that in front of you, maybe writing them down on note cards or, or putting them in a, uh, a message app inside of your phone where when you feel those temptations, you can open that up, read through those, and remind you of the truth as you're kind of being lured away by these temptations. Another thing is find scripture that reminds you of God's truth about who you are and who he made you to be. Remembering your identity in him and, and having that aspiration that we can stand tall in who he's made us up to be those are powerful reminders that kind of gives us that pause, gives us that moment uh, to take a deep breath and go, no, I'm, I'm, I'm different. I'm better than this. I, I don't need this in my life. Another thing uh, is this one passage of Scripture, one that's often misquoted, is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says this, no temptation, none at all. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. That means any temptation you face, it is common to people. There's no temptation that you face that is exceptionally harder or worse than anyone else's temptation. But it goes on to say this, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempt tempted beyond what you can bear. That means whatever temptation you're facing, if you're thinking, man, I can't overcome this. I can't resist this. I can't push back against it. God's promising there's no temptation that's ever been put in front of you that you can't push back on and fight back on because God will be with you in this. And it finishes by saying this, but when you are tempted, he, meaning God, will also provide a way out so that you can endure. And I think that's really important for us to understand that this is a battle that we can win. Even when things seem to be piling up against you, you can actually overcome this with God on your side. And I want to remind everyone of the truth of, of Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 38 and 39. It tells us, again, Paul writing here says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I think that's important because as you're going on in this journey, a lot of times you'll fall into temptation and, and you'll find yourself right back at square one and you, you want to kind of run away in shame. God's probably disappointed with me. He's probably really upset with me. And instead of drawing near to him, we actually pull away. So our source of strength, our source of reassurance that we just talked about, actually we move farther away from that. 
because we feel like, man, if I would have upset somebody else in my personal life, they wouldn't want to see me for a while. But the exact opposite is true with God. When it says in scripture that when we draw near to him, he draws near to us. And I think that's important to remember. So in those moments that we fall into temptation, probably the last thing we want to do is actually turn around and start praying. Seems a little weird if you're thinking about it, but it's probably the most important thing to do. Because in that moment, I, I guarantee you, God can meet you there and you're going to receive his forgiveness and you're going to experience his mercy and grace. And that's going to be important to help restore you and give you strength for next time. So be in prayer. Don't run from God. Always keep turning in towards him and leaning into him. And the, one of the last things I want you to remember, we talked about this a little bit in our previous video, but remember the harm it does. I want you to remember the harm it does to other people. And, and this is, I think, a, a huge deal because a lot of times we think that these are all willing participants. Nobody's hurt. Everybody's enjoying themselves. What does it matter? But, but the truth is that many people have become trapped into this lifestyle. Many people were trafficked into pornography and there are abusive relationships. These are people's children. And there's a lot of harm that's being done to them and we shouldn't be people who are participating in their harm. And we should remember about the harm it does to us. It, we talked about it before. It rewires our brains. It erodes our personal relationships. It leads to this hiddenness that we were talking about. So there's a lot of harm that comes in from partaking in pornography. It's not just this sort of victimless sort of thing. It's not just this, oh, well, it was just a, a good time or anything else. It is something that causes harm. And I think when we realize the the kind of harm it does to us, just as if we were struggling with alcohol or drugs or, or any kind of uh, eating disorder or anything like that. If we realize the harm it was doing to us, it helps empower us to say, man, I don't want that in my life. And I think that's important for us here. So there you go. A handful of things to help us as we're facing those temptations, some, some, uh, some things to help empower us in that battle. And, uh, We'll uh, be back again for another one to talk about that process of temptation and how we actually walk through that. But for now, that's what I know. This has been another episode of the Beyond Sunday podcast. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe.